Hello, welcome to the graphics programming virtual meetup. Uh, last time we implemented the focus blur, motion blur, and movable camera. So we can have this nice final scene where the object out of focus far away or really nearby gets blurred. Also, we have a bunch of moving uh, Here's in the same which exhibit motion blur effect. Now this time we will continue working on the retracing the next week work, where we will focus on the chapter three bounding value hierarchies. The key idea of bounding value hierarchies is the following: for every object inside the scene, we will have a bounding object of that object where the intersection test is easier than the actually bounded object. And if the ray hits the actual bounding object that bounds the whole object, the bounded object, then we need to continue to check whether the ray is the underlying bounded object or not. Otherwise, we can early. Even though there is a bit of extra calculation happens but it is worthwhile, especially considering when we applied those kind of bounding volumes into a hierarchy. In the, uh, in the previous solutions, when we do ray scene intersection, we just iterate through all the objects one by one and track the object intersection. This can be this can be really uh, costly because it is an order of n algorithm where n is the number of objects. But if we apply the previous bounding volumes idea into a hierarchy, we can reduce the complexity in logarithmic. In this case, we segregate our objects into two groups, the red group and the blue group. And if we and both of them are enclosed by the larger purple group. And here is a pseudo code of how we do the intersection test. So if our ray does not intersect with the purple group, we don't need to delve into all the objects inside the red groups and yellow and blue groups. But if it intersects with the purple group, we need to check the intersection with red group and blue group individually by recursion. And if we either hit the red group or blue group, then we need to check the closest hit that we want. Here's a visualization of what's going on. Consider this call object. It contains a lot of triangles. In a naive solution, we need to iterate through all the triangles of the call. But if we create a tree-like structures of this call to bound its different shapes, then if we have array that does not intersect with a larger red box, we don't need, even need to check whether it intersects with any of the triangles or not, because we know it doesn't. And similarly, if the ray does intersect with the red box, but it does not intersect with this gray box that includes the head or, and the front legs of the or then we don't need to check this part. Let's say that ray also, if that ray, luckily that intersects with uh, this box that includes the tail part of the car, then the next thing we need to is to con continue to delve into this uh, bound val bounding value and do our calculation recursively. Now, let's talk about how bounding volumes can be implemented. There are a lot of different kinds of bounding volumes. There are spheres, there are boxes, 
there, there are some other shapes I don't even know how to pronounce. If you are interested, you can just search stick graph bonding, bonding volumes that are not ABB and you find something. And the thing we will talk about today is axis aligned bonding boxes, pattern for ABB. The idea is we have an axis aligned box because it is axis aligned without any kind of rotation. It is very easy to specify with just two points where the lower left corner minimum point and the maximum point upper right corner. This is a two dimensional demonstration of the axis aligned bonding box, but this the same idea can easily extend into three dimensions. And when we check whether a ray intersects with the uh, bonding box, what we need to do is called ray slab intersection because we need to check each dimension individually. When we do this kind of ray slab intersection, we get two intersection points. And then with those two, interse two intersection points, we we can get we can get the uh, the ball bond uh, the intersection point in space. And next thing is just to check if whether the intersection points are in the range we want or not. So in this case. This, this low array has intersection points that in the range we want. So we say it intersects with the triangle, sorry, with uh, ABB. And for this way, for this way, we get intersection points, but those points have nothing to do with uh, this range of the axis aligned bonding box. So but this real, yeah, no, it happened. And here is the axis aligned bonding box class. Note that ABB is called ABB means axis aligned bonding box. I had a friend used to ask me why the three dimensional ABB is not called ABB CC. And now you know why. As we said before, ABB can be specified by two points. And then we do the intersection, just loop through all the three dimensions one by one and calculate the two intersection points and say if they are in the range we want. If they don't, we just say there are no points to continue. And here's a little bit optimized version. Notably, we uh, didn't do that much of the duplicate work when we calculate T, T0 and T1, but instead using swap to get the final value. It's proposed by someone in Pixar and apparently is more efficient. Also, the C++ standard library has something called the min max there. Exactly this purpose where the whole calculation just become one line of auto T0, T1, min max of those two. And then for every object, we actually need to construct a bounding boxes for those hit balls. For the sphere, it's pretty trivial way. We get the center point and center minus a vector where all the three dimensions are the radius of the sphere, we get the minimum point of the bounding box. Similarly, we can center plus that vector, we get a maximum point of the bounding box. For moving sphere, it's very similar. We have a starting point and the end point of the moving sphere. 
we first calculate the bonding box of those two spheres and then say a surrounding box to have a surrounding box that surrounds those two boxes and a, pro a box that can enclose the two boxes can effectively enclose the whole packs of the moving sphere consider our sphere just moves uh, linearly without any circular motions and if we have a list of objects then what we will do is just a reduction that calculates all the bounding box individually and we have a and then we just uh, surround this box with the previous result we get to get a final bonding box so like we bonding box of the first element and then we get a bonding box that includes the first and second element then we get a bonding box includes the first and second and third element that's right where i have a lot of duplicated slides And the surrounding box for axis aligned bounding box is very simple. We just get the minimum point of the bound of the both uh, box zero and box ones on each dimension. That way, we get a new minimum point of the small uh, of the new new bounding box. Similarly, we can maximum point by that's a maximum at each individual dimension now to actually have a tree like bounding by hierarchy structures we need a node object that hold the pointer to both the left hand side and, and the right hand side or oh, that's getting included it's also contains uh, this uh, axis aligned bounding box this this box can implicitly get calculated by the left hand side and right hand side but the whole point of the bounding value hierarchy is we don't need to calculate this bounding box on the fly anymore instead we catch them that's why we can have the efficiency and since we already have this bonding box cached, we just then we try to get her some bonding box. Bonding box. The intersection point is the intersection function is exactly like the pseudocode we showed before, where we first uh, try to intersect with the enclosing bonding box of the bonding bar hierarchy node, and if it does not intersect with anything we just recall otherwise we intersect with left hand side and right hand side and then check if we have any intersection if we have any intersection we will get the cl uh, closest intersection between all the intersections get the tricky part is how to construct bounding value hierarchy and the book choose a really simplistic approach that is not very effective but very easy to code and this will be the approach we will give here if you are interested in how a proper bounding value hierarchy be constructed from a list of objects we will cover the physically based rendering book later and it has a chapter on this topic but now let's just say we will follow in this book where then we have a list of primitives first randomly pick an axis like that. then we sort the primitive according to that axis so we, we can we can sort the primitives by x or by y etc then we put then we just partition the the bonding wire hierarchy parts put half of them left hand side and half of them 
<laughs> then that is what this code is doing. Notice randomly pick an axis and so axis can be zero, one, or two. Because this this book you use the integer indices and then there we do some sorting of the objects get the middle point midpoint of the list of objects then we segregate them and call this constructor recursively there are some uh, there are some special cases for example if there are Two objects, then it's pretty simple. We just put one object at the left and right. If there are only one object, we can think of using both left and the same object. And, and this way, then we finally, when we finally calculate the, the bounding box of the node, we call the bounding box of the left hand side and right hand side recursively to get. And then we just put surrounding box on both of them, outer box that is the bounding box of the current node. We have duplicate slides everywhere. So, and this is the comparison function used as helper in the previous function, where we just check the minimum point of the, the axis on the, of the minimum point, axis of the minimum points of the bounding box of the object we want. That's worthy because and we use this way as a rough way to sort object. Thank you. So here is all the content today about bonding value hierarchies. I recently did a live stream on exactly this book, uh, live coding this book using OCaml. And when I apply the bounding value hierarchy, I get about 6x of update uh, performance improvement when, when I have you when on the previous thing with about a hundred objects. And you can see even with a hundred objects, we can get 6x of improvement. If we have thousand, ten thousand object we very common in you know, things with a very large number of triangles, then these kind of accelerating data structures become essential. Bounding value hierarchies um, is also not the only accelerating data structures we can use, for example, KD trees, but it is very common and widely used. Thank you.